All right, boys and girls, this is the procedure on how to make a cell on the diffusion through a membrane, um, New York State Living Environment Lab. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over how to make a cell. So the first thing you need to make sure of is that you have your chemicals. Um, you need iodine solution, that's your, remember that's your starch indicator. You have your glucose solution and you have starch solution. You should also have a beaker of water that has just regular water, nothing else in it, and then a piece of dialysis tubing that you'll get. I have it in the beaker here to keep it wet, but you'll get it from me someplace in the classroom. Okay, so first things first, you're gonna take your dialysis tubing, which is this plastic tubing. All right, you have to tie off an end of it. So this is gonna cover basically um, steps one and two. Now, when you go to tie the end off of it, um, what you need to do is just make sure that you take it and you're just gonna take a good amount, not too much, because you don't wanna waste a lot of the cell. All right, but you wanna take enough where you can twist and twist and twist and you want to twist it nice and tight because this is going to prevent the solution that we're going to put into it from leaking out okay so once you get a nice strip there you're going to loop it and then you're going to swoop it pull it through the hole or pull it through the loop and then cinch your knot nice and tight all right so you want to make sure your knot is nice and tight so this way whatever solutions you pour into the dialysis tubing don't leak out all right, so once you have one end tied up, then now you have to start adding your solution. So what I'm gonna suggest you do is, uh, don't do it over the beaker like I was just doing, because you don't want any of the solutions getting in. So what you're going to do next is take the other end of the dialysis tubing and you're just gonna kind of rub the ends together. And it's wet, so they should kind of peel apart nice and easily. As you can see here, it's starting to open. And then just kind of keep rubbing down the tube to open up some more of the tube and it'll, again, peel apart and separate. And this will make it easier for you to pour in the solutions that you need. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your glucose solution and you're gonna open up the top so you can get it into the tube and just pour the top of the bottle into the tube, into the dialysis tubing, and you wanna fill it about a quarter of the way up. Okay, so you don't wanna put a ton in there, you don't wanna fill it all the way up, you just want about a quarter. All right, so here I just have about a quarter of it filled. All right, what you're going to do next, and that was step three, and the other part of step three is to put in the starch solution. Okay, so you're gonna put in your, take your starch solution, which is in the designated bottle, and then add that to the cell as well. And you're gonna squeeze that until it fills up. And you're gonna get it till, about, till it's about halfway. All right. And when you're about halfway or just a little bit past halfway, um, what you're then going to do for number four is tie off the top of the tube the same way we did the bottom. So all we're going to do is make sure we squeeze the air out and then just tie and twist and twist and twist. And we want to, again, make it nice and tight so this way we don't have any of that solution leaking out of the cell. All right, so again, once you get it nice and twisted up, you're going to loop it and you're going to swoop it. Pull it through, since you're not, and you're not, should be, your cell should look like this. Okay, so after you're done with this, you're gonna wanna go rinse this off. So uh, hit pause in the video, go rinse off your cell, and come back when you're done. Okay, now that you're back, we're gonna take a look at step six in the procedure here. And, uh, cause we just finished steps four, one through five. And now step six says place the cell in the beaker and add the water. So I'm gonna place the cell in the beaker here. I've already put water in it. And then I'm gonna add the starch indicator solution. So remember, your starch indicator solution is the iodine, the brown bottle. So be careful with the iodine because remember it is a stain. So if it gets on your clothes, it can stain and ruin your clothes. It can get on your hands, it will come off eventually, but it'll stay for a little bit. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some starch indicator solution into the beaker and you want it to turn, you want to add enough iodine to make it turn an amber color, which is like that yellowish color you start to see forming now. Okay. So you don't have to put a ton in there, but you know, just make sure it's a nice yellowish color. Now we take a look, the amber color is that nice yellowish color that it has. Now, once you have the amber color going in the beaker, you can now move on to the rest of the lab.
All right, boys and girls, uh, these are the directions to the chemical testing portion of the diffusion through the membrane lab. So you've already completed your cell and you set that up and put it off to the side. Now it's time to check out these um, chemical indicators to see what they do and how they turn out when you're testing for certain chemicals. So when you do the station, you gotta make sure you have a couple of things. First, you need six test tubes. You need to have four bottles of solution, one bottle of iodine, one's Benedict solution, one's glucose solution, one is starch. Iodine will be our starch indicator solution as shown in the lab packet, and our glucose indicator solution will be the Benedict solution. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is follow the directions. So you want one row of test tubes and a second row of test tubes because you're going to be testing one row for starch and one row for glucose. So make sure before you get started that you label your test tubes. You should have three test tubes labeled W for water, G for glucose, and S for starch. And once you have that all set up and those squared away, this way you can identify which test tubes are which because the solutions are clear, then you're able to move on to the next part of your lab. Okay, so for the first part of the lab, the starch indicator test, all you're going to do is take each one of your solutions, you're going to fill up one test tube with water, one test tube with glucose solution, and one test tube with starch solution. And when you do that, all you're going to do is you're going to add your chemical indicator. So since this is the starch indicator solution test, all you're going to do is take your starch indicator solution, the iodine, add a few drops into the test tubes. And what you're going to notice is this. When you add the iodine into the test tubes, if there's a negative result, which means there's no starch indicated, then you're going to have this amber yellowish color. Uh, a positive test result is going to result in a black blue type color. You'll see that change immediately and quick. Okay, once you get that done, then you can move on to your second test. Your second test is your glucose indicator solution test. So all you're going to do again is you're going to uh, fill up your three test tubes with solutions, water in the W test tube, glucose solution in the G test tube, and starch solution in the S test tube. And then you're gonna add your Benedict solution. So what you're going to do is you're gonna take your Benedict solution and you're just gonna add a few drops, 10 drops I believe, is what the directions say. And then after you're done adding the 10 drops, you should have a hot water bath going, which should be indicated by the hot plate here with the beaker of water. Now your hot water bath won't be ready until you see the water steaming or maybe a light boil. You don't wanna overboil it where the water's spilling out all over the place because it's dangerous. Okay, so once you get your hot water going, then what you're going to do is with a pair of tongs, not with the hands that I'm using, you're gonna take your test tubes and you're gonna place them in the hot water bath. Please be sure to place the test tube openings away from anybody. You don't want those test tubes openings pointing at anybody because you don't want the vapors, fumes, or even any overspill going out at a person. So please make sure that you set up your test tubes in a position where that's safe and pointing away from everybody at the table. Again, what you're going to do is you're gonna take a look at the test tubes and see if there's any color change. Typically a color change for glucose or positive test for glucose would show an orange color change or into red or something like that. The rest of the test tubes will just stay that light blue or whatever color they were going into the hot water bath. Once you are done with your tests, you're going to then record your results in the table two portion of your lab packet, the chemical test results, and you can just simply enter the colors that you see below, okay? And that's all you're going to do for the chemical testing portion of the lab. Hi there ladies and gentlemen. What we're gonna to do today in this video is learn how to set up a wet mount slide for our New York State Regents Living Environment Diffusion Through a Membrane Lab. So what you need at your station are the following. You need bottles of fresh water and salt water. You need a microscope slide, a cover slip, a piece of red onion, and a piece of paper towel. So this is what we're going to do. The first step in setting up a wet mount slide for viewing under a microscope is this. You're going to take your fresh water and you're going to add about two to three drops to your microscope slide. 
This will give the area for the specimen to sit in. Once you've done that, you're gonna take your red onion, and the best way to do this is this. Flip your onion upside down so the white is facing you, and the curve of the onion is pointing down towards the table, and you're just gonna gently take your fingers and then snap it in half. And when you snap it in half, try to peel it back so you can get the red onion film and skin to separate from the actual onion itself, as you can see there. All right, so once you've done that, just gently pull, and you want to take a piece of that red onion skin and pull it off your onion. After you've done that, you want to try to gently place it into your microscope slide. So I'm going to take this pair of forceps and carefully take this onion skin like that and place it in the water. Once you have your specimen in on the microscope slide, you want to take your cover slip and you're going to want to lower it down. So the best thing to do is to kind of stand it straight up at first and put it onto the microscope slide so it's touching and start to lean it on your pencil or pen gently. And you take your pencil or pen and you slowly lower it down onto the slide. And to do that, you just want to pull your pencil back and as you pull your pencil back, your cover slip will lay down. And we do this to prevent or reduce the amount of air bubbles that we'll see under the microscope. Okay, and then eventually you're gonna pull your pencil out and the cover slip is just gonna fall. All right, so this covers steps one through three on your lab. So right now I'm gonna ask you to pause this video and work on steps four through six. And when you're done, you can hit play again. Okay, welcome back. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to work on step seven. Step seven is going to ask you to set up your slide for viewing using salt solution. So this is going to actually going to be the part that's going to show you the osmosis that happens in the cell. So at this point for number seven, what you need to do is this. You need to take your salt solution, fill up the dropper, or pick up the bottle, and you're going to put drops, let's say, on the left side of your cover slip here. Not on the cover slip, but on the microscope slide next to the cover slip. It is okay for the water to touch the edge of the cover slip because that's what we want. So you want to put it as close to the cover slip as possible. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four. Once we do that, you're going to take your paper towel and you're just gently going to place the edge of the paper, of the paper towel along the opposite edge, not where you put the salt water, but along the opposite edge and then just slide it so it touches the cover slip and you can see the water get pulled across. This is going to pull the salt water across the cover slip and then submerge your onion cells in salt solution for viewing for osmosis. Okay, if you see the water stop moving and you still have a lot on the left, then you may just want to move your, cover, move your paper towel to pull it a little bit more. Now you don't want to get too crazy because you don't want to dry out all the water that's underneath the cover slip. So just keep putting it there and using your paper towel until you have most of that water that you place the left of the cover slip pulled underneath the cover slip itself. So that looks good enough. So at this point, you set up your slide and you are ready to do numbers seven through 10. Now that you finished number seven through 10, we are now up to step 12. Now step 12 is going to be very similar to step 7 in that we're going to add water to the left of our cover slip again, but we are not going to use the salt this time, we're going to go back to the fresh water. So the fresh water, we're going to take some, water, some samples of that, place it to the left of the cover slip, and it's going to be the same exact procedure as we did before. All you're going to do is add a few drops there, and then you're going to take your piece of paper towel and draw the water across again. So what's gonna happen now is your fresh water is now going to flood your red onion skin and replace the salt water that you had placed there before. And you're gonna keep doing that until most of this water, the fresh water on the left of the cover slip is going to move under the cover slip. And now you're ready to finish up your lap. So that's how you set up your wet mount slide and draw your solutions underneath the cover slip for the purposes of the lap.